knee flexion so that greater stability is maintained. Vaulting may be seen in the patient whose prosthesis is too long or has insufficient suspension to minimize piston action of the stump in the socket. In both these situations, rising on the normal foot aids in clearing the toe while the prosthesis swings through. Same situation might be seen in the presence of excessive knee friction or an extension aid which is too strong, tending to hold the knee in extension, creating relative lengthening of the prosthesis. This defect, rotation of the prosthetic foot at the time of initial heel contact, is most commonly caused by a plantar flexion bumper or the heel wedge of a satch foot being too firm. There is little shock absorption in such a heel and the force causes the foot to rotate, usually outward or laterally. Occasionally one may see too much toe out or external rotation of the foot built into the prosthesis or a socket which fits too loosely. The latter, however, is usually apparent even before the rotation of the foot is seen. Rotation of the prosthetic foot is occasionally seen in some patients who have poor muscle control of the stump and are unable to stabilize the socket on the stump by muscle contraction during the swing and stance phases of gait. This defect should be detected early and corrective measures instituted without delay. If it persists, some trauma to the stump may result because of the rotational forces applied by the socket to the stump. The defect may also be caused by the patient who extends the stump so vigorously through habit or efforts to stabilize the knee at heel contact that the forces must be dissipated, usually by external rotation of the foot. Uneven arm swing. This is characterized by the arm on the prosthetic side held close to the body and not moved forward and backward in the normal fashion during locomotion. The opposite upper extremity usually moves in the expected fashion. This sometimes appears as if the patient were attempting to hold the prosthesis on with the hand. It is almost invariably due to habit pattern, frequently precipitated by poor balance and the patient having been allowed to walk before he had good balance in the standing position. It is well to emphasize again that this is a defect which occurs through habit, usually as a result of poor balance during the early periods of prosthetic use. It rarely can be attributed to a prosthetic cause, although occasionally it is seen when the patient experiences stump pain from any source. Uneven timing is characterized by steps of unequal length, specifically by a very short stance period on the prosthesis. This causes an erratic gait, suggestive of running and stopping. It is simply an effort by the patient to minimize the time spent on the prosthesis. He hurries over the prosthetic stance phase and nearly doubles the period of stance on the normal extremity. The causes for such a defect are many. Any condition of the stump which contributes to weakness and hence will permit the uncontrolled extension to occur. Conversely, however, a knee extension aid which is too strong will create the same problem. It is important to differentiate which of these two factors may be operating from a prosthetic point. Attempts to increase knee friction against an extension aid which is already too strong will simply create further problems. Quite often, in the absence of prosthetic causes, we still see amputees who deliberately create this gait defect. These are the patients who like to feel the impact of the knee moving into maximum extension to assure themselves that the knee is stable. Others do it simply for the audible clue, which is noted as the knee reaches full extension just before heel strike. Every effort should be made to discourage this, however, whenever possible. A defect such as this also creates imbalance because the amputee usually pauses during the late swing phase to let full extension of the knee occur. The impact can also be reflected through the prosthesis and cause trauma to the stump if allowed to continue over a long period of time. Instability of the prosthetic knee. 
This defect exists when the amputee is unable to maintain the knee in a sufficiently extended position at heel strike and during the stance phase of gait to keep the prosthesis stable. The tendency to fall is always present. The most common amputee cause for such a defect is very weak hip extensors or perhaps a severe hip flexion deformity which has not been prosthetically compensated for. If the prosthesis is constructed with the knee joint too far ahead of a line joining the weight-bearing portion of the socket and foot, the knee will be unstable. This line is sometimes referred to as the TKA or trochanter knee ankle line. In a prosthesis otherwise well aligned, the knee can still be unstable because the plantar flexion bumper or heel wedge is too firm, causing premature flexion of the knee by the force created. Infrequently, one will see a socket into which too much initial flexion has been built, restricting the amputee's own ability to extend the stump and hence stabilize the knee. Finally, failure to limit dorsiflexion of the prosthetic foot can contribute to incomplete knee control. All causes for this defect must be considered as quickly as possible and corrected. An unstable knee renders a prosthesis really of little use to the amputee. The gait is unsafe, falls and injury can occur easily, and no justification for a persistence of this defect exists. During the next two sequences, you will see gait deviations, which are called whips. These are best evaluated by viewing the patient as he walks away from you. 